So basic so basically with this song, from what I understand, it's just you have to systematize it and make it an exercise. And like every day you just have to build the muscle memory. There's nothing crazy about this. This is super easy. Really, really basic rhythm. One, um, bum, 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 bum. He's just, he's hit, he doesn't even have a break in anything. There's no like gaps. It's just da, 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 like if, we, if I just yoloed it. Like, as long as you, you play a note, as much as that was like a train wreck, um, if you sit down and practice that exercise of just like... up the last one. Digitization. I don't know what digitization is. I've never heard of digitization exercises. Sorry, I'm ignorant. <laughs> please, please teach me. I don't know what that means. I might have a different word for it. I always gotta, remember, I gotta keep, remember to go down to that. Get that interval. So he's playing a one chord. And then he goes to a four chord. To an A. To a two minor. E minor. So in case you guys are wondering, um, if you're going to learn these songs, don't sit down. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but this is when I look at a song, I'm like, what's he doing? What makes it sound so cool? So a lot of people will be like, all right, this is the exercise. He's doing a major seven arpeggio, but he's being very clever about it. So he's playing root, fifth, seven, fifth. 
and then that's the two, so he's doing a nine, so it's actually a major nine. So I could do this. Sing a different song now, but um, so new major, so it is a major seven. So he's going, so say this is his A, so this is a root note. So he's going playing the one fresh. What's up, Haru? Thank you for following. So he's going one, five, major seven, five, nine, five, one, five, six. So he's getting all of these notes out, which is really, really pretty. So he's going, so when he plays that, if you're gonna steal stuff like that, so he's, say we got that chord, right? We got a. Uh... Now we can improvise over it. See if we can muck around with it. When he's singing of his melody notes. So he's starting on the third, which is pretty. So he's getting the major third. And this is a really, really clever thing. If you say you're writing a song, when you guys think about music, especially because we've got some writers in the chat, um, John Mayer is not a joke. Everything he does, I mean, I don't know exactly how like banger of like smartness as he, he is I don't know he's, I, I, I assume he's he's like 200 IQing stuff because it just feels like that he just so naturally does this but if you want to replicate what he does yeah. that is his opening note so when he gives you this and he does that that arpeggio that he's got there so he's giving you root, fifth, major seven, and then he's got his nine, major seven. There's no three. Now the three determines whether it's major or minor. Obviously the major seven is going to imply, if you're hearing a major seven from a root note, it's going to imply that it's going to be pretty much two chords. Um, it's either going to be a one or a four chord. But when he goes, yeah, yeah, how nice is that? So he starts on his third. And then. Nine, four, nine. So he goes. Three, he plays a third. Nine, eleven, The note. I'm pretty sure that's the, the note. Ooh, he's doing a six to a five. But just that. The opening note of a song that you write really matters. Like if you if you when you're going to write, don't yeah, yeah. Like this is what a, a average writer. Does. 
So you can see how that sounds very like safe and not really clever. But I'm obviously playing the third when I do it. But he's like, I'm going to give you all the notes except for the third. And then he's going to sing the third. So he's giving you a root, fifth, seven, nine, and then he sings the third. So with his guitar and his voice, he matches and gives you the full harmony. And that's why when you hear it, just he sings, it pops so hard. Yeah. Like if, there, if, there's, if you're talking about like hooks and things like that, that's a hook. So if you're wondering what is a hook and what makes the song sound so deadly and like epic as shit, it's because he does stuff like that. Da, da, da. He's not going, uh, da, 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 which is what an average rider would do. Uh, 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 uh. But he's going, he's going, uh, uh, uh. so he's playing the third, nine, eleven, After that, he's kind of moving, doing his own thing. But, but you, if you're thinking about when you're writing songs, um, like that's what John May is doing. He's just being very, very clever with like, um, yeah, com- yeah. You want to think, complete the harmony with your voice. I mean, you don't have to do that every time. I'm not saying like, okay, we're gonna be playing this chord. Let's go third. You know, you don't have to do that. But he has to be like when you're writing such a good like a really rich harmony. There's a rich richness to what he's doing there. Richer, 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 rock on my phone. You know, you really want to be very, very specific on what you're going to do. And him leaving space for the third to then jump in with his voice is like, that's one of those moments where you're just like, yeah, so good. And that 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 just like <sighs> so good. That's why he is who he is. Um So when you go to learn these songs, I mean, when I'm learning this right now, I'm not thinking like, okay, cool, I'm going to play this guitar part. I'm going to sit here and practice guitar for you guys for like 2 hours. That's boring. Um so when I, when I hear these songs, this is what makes it so exciting for me is this kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. Oops. So when he's doing over that, he's doing that over this chord. So he's doing over his four, four chord. So he's got the third. He's ending. <gasps> Look at that. So that note that he hits there at the end. So that note he ends on is the third of the next chord that he played. That's so epic. So I wonder if that's how he wrote it though. And then he was like, okay, the third of the next chord is because he knows the third is going to have a really nice spotlight. Because that's the third there. 
So he just went from the third of one chord and he started it and then he ended his melodic phrase with the third of the next chord. So both two spotlighting harmonies. That's, that's not an accident. I don't know how he would have, I don't, we obviously don't know how he went in his writing process, but you can reverse engineer his decision. Um, he's definitely not a musician who's going to be like, he's just not going to like, he knows if it's going to work. So, like he could have gone, you done that. I just need to double check that I am correct. Tell me where is that taking me? Yes, yeah, the third. It goes. Now tell me where is that taking me? Where the bin? Let's see. Let's just close this clipping thing. Just a gray. Just a gray. That's on a root note of the next chord. good is his voice too like when you're looking at how good of a singer is that he is um like so many people get really into the guitar part but what makes john mayer like epic as shit is this it's and i i get the conversation yeah this is after his vocal surgery but like a lot of people will be so laser focused on his guitar playing and his guitar playing is awesome i love it i'm just saying if you're listening to only his guitar playing, you're missing out. Um, and so many people were like, I'll oh, play Edge of a Desire. Like just how you guys said, like, what, you want to see me like play all the notes? Like who cares? Like, <laughs> it's like, can I do a guitar exercise for like six hours and then I will play it? Like that, that's essentially how it works. But um, this stuff, this is the stuff that makes it so amazing. Um. I mean, he doesn't have to sing it in the in the right key. He just sings it with a lower key. I would say he, all of his playing has gotten so much better now. His his attention to melody and composition is just un, un fucking believable now. He's so good. Just like he just doesn't stop getting better. I, I don't I don't think he's ever stopped. Infinity, infinity, infinity. How does he do that? Infinity. A tiny infinity. Tiny infinity. 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 Okay, cool. So he starts the the melody, like his whole melody singing on a third. And then it's the third, third on the four chord. So he's playing the root note of the of the two minor chord. And which now becomes the five of the five chord. Infinity, 
So it does end on the root note. Cool. So if I were to do this like harmony. Now I'm curious about this. What are you doing, pedal? All right. Ah, oh, cheeky. All right, let's 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 do this. Pugs, man, what up? to the third. So if I'm doing improvisation, so I like, oh, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this because it's quite cool. I'm really bad at my major in, and major pentatonic stuff. So if we want to think about minor pentatonic stuff, like that. I just kind of like uh, I'm muting with my fingers that's how I get the right But yeah, so if I want to improvise over that. So I like to think in minor pentatonic land. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, Cooley. I love that you're learning. This is cool. Okay, because I'm learning. Um, so one thing I want to get better with is my major imp improvisation stuff. So we've got a one chord here. I want to think about where is my thirds. Like, so where, where is... If we're going to think about, like, where's my one chord situated here? So I'm going to make an, uh, an actual tutorial on this for you guys in our course, in the school course. So if I look at it, I'm like, okay, one chord in my minor pentatonic. That's the minor pentatonic that fits here. My one is right there. We've got, that's my root note of my one. And that's where the seven is. And then I've got my third is right there. And that's a five. And then if I go to my four chord, so you can just like make a C shape for the four chord, and then they'll give you all of the all of the chord tones. That's where my third is right there. And then we got our, um, and then we got our two minor chord, which is going to be similar to the. Uh, so you do like an A minor shape. And that will give you all of the stuff of the two minor chord. So we got our we got our root. The uh, root third there. Wait, sorry, that was there. Four is the third's there. Yeah, that was getting so confused. And then the A minor chord. Yeah. All right, cool, perfect. So the way I'm going to map this out is. I got my one chord, which means I'm going to think of the G shape here. So I'm playing a G chord right there, or like a, say you're going to play a G chord, be like this. So I'm just going to grab all the notes that make a G chord shape, or that triad, and that's my one chord. 
And then when I get my four chord, I do a C shape. And then when I get to my A minor chord, which is the two. And then I got a five chord, which is a D. And then I come back to my one. So let's try it out. So you can see how that's, that can make you, like, help you out with your improvisation. So I'm stealing how John Mayer just wrote. Um, so basically I'm reverse engineering what we just learned. So we just learned John is like, okay, well, here's my chords. One major seven, four major seven, two minor seven, and then a five seven. And then he's accenting. And then he's accenting that that arpeggio, but he's not playing the third that much. So we're going to be like, all right, let's aim for the third of the one chord, third of the four chord, and then on the two minor and the five, we can just chill. And then that's what's giving me this really nice melodic line that I'm coming up with because I'm thinking... Jenna Lauren, what's going on? Mm -hmm. 
Do you see how I got that G shape there? C shape. A minor shape. Then the D. And that's how you can use cage to improvise. So basically, I'm, I'm stealing a bunch of different ideas to get my creative output on improvisation. So I'm like using the cage system to get my framework, mm -hmm. using the minor pentatonic to give me like, this is the zone. And then I'm using John Mayer's melodic line to be like, this will key, like this will be my like anchor points of like how I can follow the chords and be very clever and really pretty. Um, so if you're gonna be soloing, it can sound close to the voice. So all of these things that I do, if I were improvising, would connect more and more with the song. Um, so, yeah. Should do it, definitely do it. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be part of the improvisation and music theory course. So I've, I ha just can't figure out a way to split it because I'm like, it's the same thing, but I think my music theory course is gonna be like the thing that I love the most. Um, and I'll just have it set up that like, if anyone doesn't get what I'm saying in the improvisation, I'm gonna just go to the music theory course. Like you have to watch the video to understand. But as long as that's available, ooh, nice, nice cold latte right there. Woohoo! Well, that's cool. Hey, I'm re I'm really glad we got to listen to the song. This is cool. I might uh I might just do that as like an exercise for fun. Like we'll just get through the verse and I'll just do that as like an exercise every day in the morning when I wake up. Size. All right, all right, let's go back to playing some music. Uh, thank you. Pack back and pack to go to back to my apartment. Oh my God, I'm so glad. Hey, no, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for the request. Okay, now, now like low key, just then. Do you guys like that? Do you guys like that format, that vibe? Because I love that. Me, I love that shit. We're just talking about, we're doing things that I love. I truly love going in and figuring out the puzzle. That's what I love about music. I, I love performing, I love all these things, but the, the true thing, the, the, the coolest thing of everything that I do is that. I just love going in and being like, what are they doing? And then that makes you hear more things and then you just improve and so like. <laughs> You never would have figured it out. Yeah, I mean, look, if you guys like low key, right? So anyone, I'll, I'll clip this for you guys. So anyone who wants to play Edge of Desire um, and you want to sing and play it, you can do the intro of the and learn the actual lick. And then once you come to the song, you can do. So you come on the A chord or D chord. Then a B minor to an E, back to an A chord. So if you want to do it like that, that could be totally, I mean, say for instance, you were performing it and people didn't know the John Mayer song and you loved it and you want to perform for people. If you did that, it'd be like a fun intro. It'd feel like a, it'd, it'd be a bit like under the bridge style. And I think that might be um, something that you can get to listenable. And then as you get super comfortable with the chords, like you could practice the chords doing like, yeah.
And then you could like build up your confidence in like the right hand rhythms and then you can bring in the whatever it is i have to learn it properly anyway that's my two cents on how you could approach edge of desire anyway shall we play something been a John Mayer stream today. Literally started off the bat with neon and chilling. But Samantha, I thought you were a Keith Urban fan. Um, but that's so cool to see that you're you're into John Mayer as well. That's so cool. So yeah, that's I, I can clip that for you guys and put it on YouTube if that uh, was helpful to you. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I would approach Edge of Desire um, if I was going to perform it and do it. But it's such a good song. So now the other thing I want to do is let's steal it. And let's put it into a different song. Um, what's a really cool song that I can loop? Let's do this. This would be pretty fun. It's a bit of a switch. Um, it's a huge switch. It's, it's like a woo, 180. How do I how do I do the E minor shape up the fretboard? Um, what do you, the E shape? So E shape is just do your E, your E chord, and then just add your your hand. That's like the basic bar chord shape. You just do your E and bring it up. So if you're doing E minor, right, and you're doing minor pentatonic. Do an A minor, E minor chord. Oh, for Edge of Desire. So I would do A. So Edge of Desire is A, D, B minor, E, A. Or you could go A, D up here, B minor, and then E, and then A. Or you could do A major 7. And D major 9. And then you do A minor 11. And then a D7. <laughs> Mahabazaki. Um, uh, can I release 50% of your skill with like three months? Uh, probably not. I, would, I don't know where you're at. Like, are you a complete beginner? But honestly... If you go through my free school and like consume that content and you practice every day for five to six hours, you'll probably get pretty good pretty fast. Like really good, really fast. It's more just having someone who can pick things out for you. So I have a coaching program you can join if you want. Um, and you can post videos on there at, like every day if you want to. And I'll give you feedback. And like Flame's been doing it and uh, Dylan's doing it. But basically you need to be able to practice every day and then have something that can keep you accountable so that you will want to practice every day. And that every time you practice each day, you don't build up bad habits. So that's kind of what I, like my coaching program is designed for. It's to set up, set you up for success, give you all the tools that I use to practice. And then all you want to do is if you want to get good fast, the only way to get good fast is to practice heaps. Key one, practice heaps. And then the second thing is when you are practicing, it is practice. And a lot of people mistake practice for playing. So a lot of people will play for five hours, but they didn't grow. So like for me just then, like for me, that's practice. Like you guys were like, oh, play Edge of Desire. I'm like, playing Edge of Desire doesn't make me a better player. But what it does do is it opened my head up to being like, okay, well, what's he doing there? Major seven. Okay, he's hitting the third. So he's... And then it made me force me into being like, okay, well, where am I going to fit this in my cage system when I'm improvising? So that's practice. So now when I come in and I'm like, whoops, and I'm going like, I'm 
like, all right, I got this. So just there, I'm using his melody. I'm using his little third, 11th, nine. And so that's where, I, for me, that's practice. That's like, that's fucking gold. I'm stealing that shit. That's, that's what, for me, is going to get me really good. That improves my playing heaps. So being able to like pick out things like that, and then I and then I use that to improve my practice. How would I improvise over Edge of Desire without a looper? I wouldn't. I just like you mean like solo, right? Like so if you're doing like if you were doing, I, I mean like you you wouldn't need to unless you were going to. I would get into a chord progression. I'd be like. Like how do you how the fuck do you improvise like that? Okay, so I'll tell you the trick. <laughs> You're too kind on TikTok. Okay, so the trick to what I'm doing right there. Okay, so if I'm going in and I'm gonna be like, all right, how do I improvise? The the trick to improvisation is um, don't worry about the scale. So you just saw me do a bunch of shit there, and you're like. Oh my god, what the fuck is he doing? like how do you know how does he know where the scale is? I'm thinking rhythm first. First thing is That's what you want to think first. So that's exactly what I'm doing first. I know where my stress beats are. And then the second thing I'm going to think of is where's the chord progression? So I know I've got an A chord here, and then the next chord is a D, and then I've got a B minor, and then I've got an E, and wherever you like to go, you play, and then you come back to A, minor, a, a major. So I've got a one, a four, and then a two, and then I've got a five, and then I've got a one. Now, wherever the guitar, I, I am thinking, so the reason why that's number two is because that's going to map where my licks are going to go. So you know how we're talking about, you gotta get the rhythm in, and then you gotta get the chords, and then you fill only as good as you can fill. You don't wanna be going like. You don't wanna do stuff like that. You wanna start really simple. So I'm gonna go, I've got. Four. So that's how much time I've got. Uh, and that's when I got to hit the next chord. So I know from that point, from the very first strum, I've got that much time to get to my four chord. And in that time, I can either strum a chord or I can fill with a guitar lick in the minor pentatonic. So you find the pentatonic space that you want to be in. 
So when I play that one major chord, I'm like over here, right? And then I'm like, all right, I'm coming straight to the four chord. So I got. Now my next chord is going to be the two minor and I'm going to go over here. One major. So I'm kind of getting distracted. But does that make sense? Is that... Am I, do, am I like pulling that apart in a really, really fun way? Like, does that click with you guys? You need to learn how to use a pick. I mean, you can do it with your fingers. Like, it's, it has nothing to do with your right hand. It has everything to do with can your brain separate the rhythm, then the chords, and then fill without getting carried away. Because a lot of people think that they had to come up with the sickest guitar lick. But it's not about the sickest guitar lick. It's about can you respect the timing and then can you respect the chord progression and then can you fit any idea that you're capable of in between all of that. And it, and it goes in that progression. You never fuck up the timing and you never mess up the chord changes. You always want to land on the chord changes and then your guitar licks matter. And a guitar lick doesn't have to be like, all right, Every time you play a chord, go to the minor pentatonic. You could just play the chord. You could just play an arpeggio. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. There's no, no crazy, crazy like genius thing happening here. There's like, uh, if it feels like it's a genius thing, then that's like, like any of you can do this. If you sat down and practiced this enough, you would get it down quite quickly. Um, 